We've been talking about this with our friend uh, from right here in town uh, about uh, the mental um, health problems that are attacking us. State Representative Jim Struzzi is uh, also concerned about it. He's introduced some legislation in Harrisburg having to do with mental health. What about mental health in schools? Whether you're talking with Dr. Ralph May or Representative Struzzi or this gentleman, Kevin dayhill Futural, who is the head of counseling in school, uh, we, uh, we are concerned about the mental health of our students. Our conversation with Kevin brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Kevin, good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. Mental health in schools has always been an issue, and I don't know that we're handling it any better or any worse than we once did, but we certainly are hearing more about it these days, aren't we? Yeah, we are, and, and I think it's a, it's a focus that's uh, appropriate and, and one that, like you said, we've been hearing about it for a while. Uh, I do think that uh, COVID and the pandemic has, has concentrated the, the focus there right now, um, and I think it's real important. The American Academy of Pediatrics has declared it a national emergency, uh, thinking about children's mental health. Uh, the, the role of COVID-19, the pandemic, and all of the uh, new rulings and the isolation that kids uh, felt by having to stay at home and not being able to get that social activity of schools, um, is it uh, as dire as, as it's being made out to be? Yeah, I mean, I think I, you know, to, to say the degree of of concern, you know, is is um, you know, it's not an exact science, but but to say that there is concern is absolutely uh, correct and, and and should be of concern. I think the isolation is a big factor uh, for you know not to forget that a lot of a lot of children you know also had family members die, and and so there is a uh, an element of that that needs to be considered. Uh, along with with the, just the the larger group of, of children who experience the isolation and the disconnect uh, from their peers, uh, really at critical times for their own development and their own ability to sort of understand who they are, how the world works, uh, what their support networks around them look like, uh, and and how to sort of you know grow and and move through that. And the things that you don't, you know, we all I think kind of took for granted. Yeah, I think one of the things about it is as well, kids aren't emotionally mature. They haven't had the opportunity or been called upon uh, to do some of the things that they've had to do in terms of their mental health. So they might not even know how to react to how they're feeling. And so uh, we get all kinds of different manifestations of how mental health is affecting children, don't we? Absolutely. And what you see on the outside isn't always what's going on on the inside. Uh, and so having the having techniques or having ways of of helping that uh, become come expressed, become exposed is real important. And one of the things that we think uh, is a great way to do that in schools is, is using various forms of the arts, uh, visual arts, music, um, dance and movement, theater, different opportunities for kids to sort of express themselves in ways that are playful, that are fun, um, that, that can be you know openly accepted by everyone around you uh, and connect you to your peers in a, in a, in a healthy way. Uh, and, and that's that's a good way to really see the status and, and how how kids are doing. You know, that's an interesting approach to it. What are some of the other ways that uh, teachers and schools and counselors are helping kids to deal with mental health issues? You know, they're taking time in, in, in their school day and creating routines around uh, just, just either checking in or having various uh, uh, meditation or mindful moments or just... You know, helping kids breathe, um, and it sounds simple and sounds kind of strange, helping kids breathe. If they're not breathing, what are they doing? But, but just consciously doing these things so that they slow themselves down and, and feel the, feel the experiences that they're going through in that moment. Um, we have a whole section of our website called Partners in Healing, which has a, a bunch of activities that are, they're easily downloaded, easily integrated. Um, one of them is this breathing technique where you, you know, breathe in like you're smelling a rose and breathe out like you're blowing out birthday candles. Mm. Do that four times and you'll see in a, in just uh, a kind of a decompression happen throughout the whole class. Well, that tells us a little bit about what Counseling in School does. Introduce us to Counseling in School. What's it all about? Sure. We're a not-for-profit organization that's been supporting New York City Public Schools since 1986. and. We take, uh, you know, very dedicated and qualified mental health folks and create programs right in schools where they're there every day and really breaks down any kind of barrier to access for children and families, just become a normal part of the school uh, school day. And 
whatever goes on, and, and we integrate into classrooms. It's not just pulling someone out for some kind of a therapy session, but it's just finding ways to integrate this whole this whole view on, on emotional wellness as, as part of the school day, um, as, as important as anything else that happens uh, during those eight hours. It is uh, interesting that uh, when we think about uh, falling behind in math class, for instance, um, uh, math builds upon uh, the day before, and, and each lesson each day is going to build you for the next day. Uh, does it work that way in, in mental health as well? If you have a problem early, those problems are just going to snowball unless you deal with it from the very beginning? Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair way to look at it. Um, you wanna you wanna be on top of it, and you wanna sort of continue to sort of if someone is in pain, you want them to heal. Um, you know, if something heals in a, in a way that's that's broken. It's gonna it's not gonna fix itself, uh, and so you need to sort of stay on top of it and and help kids. And and a lot of things that you can do with children in schools, you know, they can also then do on their own. And 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 they're quick to pick these things up. They're quick to learn. Um, you know, they, you'd be surprised kids suddenly taking the opportunity to stop themselves and think and take a breath or, you know, take take a moment to, to sort of practice a technique that you might have taught them that, that helps them sort of understand what they're feeling and be able to express it instead of just acting it out all over the place. I would assume that certain approaches would work with elementary school younger students um, that might not necessarily work with older kids and vice versa. Would that be true? Absolutely. You have to calibrate what your technique is towards the age group that you're dealing with. And certainly the older the children get, the more you want to do these things in a peer-centered way. Um, they're going to be a lot more self-conscious about the things that they do. But one of the things that's certainly true about this pandemic is that, you know, the age doesn't necessarily tell you exactly where the emotional state is anymore. Um, the older, you, know, you might be 13 years old, but really, there might be an emotional maturity closer to 11 because you haven't had that opportunity to sort of grow in the same way that you would have had you been around your peers and in the same type of situations over the last two years. So it's important to not just look at the age and sort of the size of the child and think you got it all figured out. Um, you really got to kind of spend a little bit of time with them and see exactly where they are. Kevin Dayhill Future was our guest. Where He's the head of Counseling in School, a nonprofit organization based in New York City. Kevin, is the, is the say, let's pick an age, 12-year-old kid in 2022 uh, as emotionally stable as uh, the same 12-year-old kid would have been in 2018? You know, the, 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 the broad-based answer is probably not. Um, but again, I, I think one of the real important things to do is to, you know, get to know that 12-year-old and, and find ways to let that 12-year-old tell you really what it is that they're going through and how it is that they feel about life around them. Are they feeling hopeful? Um, you know, what, 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 what do they see in the next five years for themselves? Um, what do they see in the next year for themselves? And, and just spending some time finding out um, how, the, how they are doing. Some, some children through this pandemic, you know, it's, it's not the common case, but some children preferred the disconnection or did, did better. They, were, they, they got stronger somehow. Um, by being a little bit more time on their own. Um, other kids, that was quite the opposite, and that, that was really damaging. So you've got you've to take the time to speak to them and spend some time and see how they're doing. And if children are uh, in a mental health declaration of emergency, if it's a national emergency right now, and school districts have allocated their resources where they have, um, it, it should naturally follow that um, the people who are leading the effort to um, to uh, tamp down this emergency might not necessarily be professionals uh, in mental health counseling. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it would seem to be uh, more likely that they are not. Um, and so school districts have to pay special attention to that, don't they? Yeah, and I think that it's, you know, you can take a public health approach to mental health. I mean, you can... There, there are a lot of things that non-professionals can do to be emotionally responsive to children, to be alert and aware to what it is that's happening for them. And you know, not every not every child who has some uh, emotional pressure on them or is feeling uh, some kind of me you know uh, men mental disease needs needs professional care. Um, they might just need someone to listen. They might just need uh, someone to understand uh, what it is that they're doing. Uh, or how they're feeling. Um, there are certainly those that do need it, and, and the resources, gratefully, are being placed there for those. But, you know, I think it's a mistake to say that 
well, every child then you know needs to go to that professional. I think that the adults um, we all need to support ourselves to feel okay because we all went through the same things. But if we can give our adults that, if we can give our teachers the support that they need, then I think they can they can really give a lot of the children the support that they need as well. Well, you speak of resources, certainly counseling in schools sounds like one of those resources. Where do we learn more? Uh, Counselinginschools.org. Uh, a lot of information there. Like I said, there's a section there called Partners in Healing. There's a lot of information, uh, downloadable PDFs and things that, that give a lot of different um, exercises and techniques that folks can put right into practice and, and, and see, see what kind of uh, effect you can have. He is Kevin Dayhill Futural. The organization is called Counseling in School. Thanks for spending some time with us today. My pleasure. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 1160.